Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So it's about 5 to 4. It is 1017 Friday. This one says 71.7 degrees. That says 69. That says the sun isn't on my batteries right now. Battery. <coughs> right now. In 21.1 degrees Celsius. So, um... Today is normal. This is normally my long week. I normally have a um, two 12-hour runs and then a four-hour tonight. But um, I take a vacation day. My vacation days are 12 hours long, and I break a vacation day into three pieces. And what I do is I whack uh, uh, <clears throat> the four-day week. <clears throat> you can probably hear my voice isn't quite up to par. I'm, I seem to have picked up a cold. I don't know if it's uh, one of the uh, Outbreak Monkey uh, piano students or Outbreak Monkey characters at work or, you know, if my wife did the old Typhoid Mary and gave it to me. But anyway, I have this cold. So um, my wife had it before me, so it's probably from her. She dug up this tea at some health food store. It's got slippery elm root and uh, and licorice and stuff like that in it. It really it does seem to help the throat. Um, yeah, you gotta wonder about drinking anything that has root in it, though. But anyway, what's this video about? We've it's been windy over the last day or so. Uh, this this video is about the uh, get, getting back to the pit bike here. I was specifically asked about wiring the pit bike, and I've been thinking about this for a while. There are some halfway decent videos on, on the internet here and there, um, but when it comes to like schematics, I can't copy this. Um, I can't copy the exact thing and like print it out and put it and show you because my friends at uh, YouTube instantly ask if I have copyright for the for the schematic right I get nasty little little notes about that so I have to hand write everything out and uh, for you, you know a guy who went to Catholic school and has hands that look like this. This is about as good as my penmanship gets. Um, so anyway, this is the pit bike. <clears throat> and the thing to always look at, and remember, your world is the CDR unit. The CDR unit, I'm going to call it the heart. It's the heart of the bike. So, start out with the CDI unit. And when you're looking at this diagram, what you want to be aware of is you're looking down at the CDI unit, you're looking at the plug. So you're looking at the wires as they go into the back of the plug. Very important, otherwise you do it upside down. This little bump here is that bump there, right, where it clips on. Once again, looking at the CDI, notice the blue and green, red and black, black and yellow. Those are the four wires that matter. Other than that, you really don't care. So let's start out which one, with each and every one of them. First of all, get everything oriented properly. The blue guy, right? Blue and white. Okay, blue and white. That goes to your CDI pickup. On this bike, I believe it's underneath the flywheel. So that's where it goes, right? Blue and white. Um, and there's a wire that comes from, this actually comes from the engine and you can see the blue and white right, right there. You can see the green and you can see the red. Those are the ones that matter. So blue and white goes to the CDI, and if the CDI is underneath the flywheel, it's probably already grounded. That's what that thing is right there. We're pointing. That's the ground. So the second most important wire to the pit bike is this green wire. 
it goes to the frame of the bike typically. Notice both these things are grounded. So you got to make sure all the grounds on the frame are in really nice shape. You have the uh, white and black wire that goes to the on and off switch. Uh, generally speaking when I'm troubleshooting I try to make sure that's floating because I don't want it turned off so I'm doing all this troubleshooting and what's wrong with the bike is my on and off switch whether it's this guy up here or the key switch down here is turned off currently on this bike the on and off switch is not hooked up black and red goes to the stator once again that's another one of those wires that come out of the engines engine and black and yellow goes up to the ignition coil that's the thing where the fat wire comes out and goes to the spark once again notice the ignition coil grounded to the frame CDI pickup grounded to the frame the CDI grounded to the frame the stator grounded to the frame so you got to make sure that everything's grounded to the frame look at the CDI unit as the heart the stator is the power source I don't know look at it as the lungs perhaps the CDI unit is the the CDI pickup is the brain it tells this whole thing when to spark basically as the flywheel goes around you make energy here um, and what the CDI unit does is it packages the energy into a nice pulse and that pulse goes to the coil gets up stepped up and makes your spark how does the CDI know when to shoot that pulse the CDI pickup so there you have it piece of cake right you basically have four wires that you have to get to your CDI your ground gotta have ground or you're screwed right you gotta have stator to power the CDI and you need AC for these particular bikes they use an AC CDI some of the other bikes use a DC CDI not too many out there most bikes use an AC CDI um, black and yellow once again to your ignition coil that's where your spark comes from and the CD pickup the CDI pickup right that's uh, blue and white piece of cake I don't know did you guys see this let me just uh, up it a little bit and remember you're looking at the back of the CDI just like that and there you are right you can see the different colors going right into the back of the CDI what else could I tell you I um while I was drawing this out I also went through the trouble of drawing out the Honda 200S and boy doesn't it look familiar so this is the Honda 200S right I put the CDI pulse generator in the same place it has a dark green wire uh, blue and yellow go from it to the CDI look at where it hits the CDI same exact place dark green same exact place black and white for the on and off switch same exact place black wire from the stator instead of black and black and red this is just the black wire from the stator once again same exact location and black and yellow fires the coil which is the same exact color as that so the only difference on the Honda 200S configuration is it uses a black wire instead of a black and red wire but the exact same pinout the exact same locations the exact same um, um, basic schematic uh, some of these guys um, have the round plug and as a matter of fact I'm looking at one over there this guy here this 200E has the round plug you could go through that and figure out by color what everything is and basically wire up um, your, your basic um, dirt, dirt bike CDI um, generally speaking though whatever um, that guy has a little
bigger CDI than I almost expect on it. That means they, they probably have a rev limiter in it and they got the advance in there. Um, normally, like for these guys, if I'm buying one of the China CDIs, let's see what if I have one here on the top drawer. This is a uh, China CDI. Um, I normally just look up, um, and believe it or not, that one works, even though it's kind of crappily made. You can see the way it's pulling out. When it, when I buy the cheap ones, I I just look up, um, um, what is it, Honda Clone CDI or or something like that, and I look for it to be narrow like this. These guys seem to like the narrow ones. Um, I'm not sure if this one would work over there. I'm not sure if the advance would be right. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I could try it perhaps, but yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure what it exactly. I mean, either they work or they don't. It's not like you put them on there and suddenly you hear an explosion and uh, y you know your your pit bike head grenaded between your legs as you were trying to kick it over. Either they fire or they don't. Um, on some of them, um, I, I think it has to do with the advance. And as you're trying to kick them over, um, if the advance is not in the right place to start, they basically won't won't start. Um, but it could be maddening because you could be looking at it and you could be saying, oh, this son of a bitch is sparking. Why the hell won't it start? Well, if your advance is not in the right place, it's never going to start. Right. If you, if you're not sparking at the right time, your engine isn't going to fire over. So anyway, I hope I hope this helps um, between the 200s and the um, pit bike. Um, there are other things one could obviously do as you're as you're probing. Let's say you're troubleshooting this Honda 200s. You can kind of get the CDI loose and slip a little probe down there and have another probe hooked to the frame and take an ohm reading to make sure that you have a good ground to hook up to the frame that's important for this guy here once again you could slide a probe kind of down alongside the wire in the back of the uh, plug and you could figure out if it's permanently turned off so you you want this to be open and you want a short there this guy here to the stator, you want a fairly low ohm number, I don't know, just for a number, throw it somewhere around 100. If you see an open circuit, um, you, you know that you got a problem here, once again, between ground and here. If you see an open circuit, you know you got a problem, or if you see a rock dead short, you know you got a problem. I'm not sure, I don't quite remember what, what this number is is supposed to be if you if you probe it um i i think i um this is a, a primary so it's i don't know 500 a thousand ohms would be my guess i mean these things these numbers are written down what the primary should be and to your pulse generator on on these guys there's somewhere you, you know 29 30 50 ohms so if you see an open circuit or you see a dead short once again you should start wondering and that's just something you can very easily do just one meter hooked rock solid to ground one lead of the meter hooked rock solid to ground and then you just probe around as you're using a um, digital meter one of these guys Whenever I go to Harbor and I have the coupon, I get a free meter because that's what I do when you're a hoarder. Anyway, make sure you're on the you know right range, um, 200 ohms, you know 2,000. Make make sure you're if you're trying to look for a short and you're up in the up in the uh, you know mega ohms, you're not going to know how close to a short. You're going to see a short, but you're not going to know if it's a 50 ohm. Um, resistance or a one ohm resistance up there so make sure you you scale it if you're looking for a short you're you're probably want to you're going to want to be at the 200 ohms range for this guy and for like if you're trying to figure out how many ohms you have here and if you're getting kind of an open circuit what you want to do is is you know put it up at the um 
um, thousands, tens of thousands, or even mega ohm range to have you have something here. You can look up what the value should be on the internet for, for that. I know offhand this should be under 50, somewhere around 50. Um, I, obviously, you want your on and off switch as an open if you're trying to fire up the bike. Uh, your stator, you, you know, normally that's a few ohms, you, you know, 20 or so. It's it's relatively low. The the only number I can't quote you right off the top of my head is that guy. So, I hope this helps. Any other questions, please ask. Remember, dark green, black and white for your on and off switch. Switch dark green is obviously your ground. Black is where it comes from the stator. Black and yellow, it goes into the primary of your ignition coil. Your ignition coil is the uh, thing that uh, y you know you spark from, and you got to make sure your your ignition coil is grounded. If your ignition coil is not grounded, you know you're screwed. And I've I've had that trouble um, on one of these bikes here. You can't. I'll put the gas tank back on. You can't. You can't see it, but um, they actually broke a bolt off. And uh, with the one bolt left, I had to take it out and make sure things were really, really clean, so that this was bolted on nice and solid. As you're looking around, notice all the grounds. Make sure your grounds are good, or you'll be screwed. Okay, once again, questions please ask. Thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing. We'll catch up with you guys on the next episode of The Horde. Till then, remember, tires down, head up, and enjoy all your days. Thanks.